Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of our RTS series. Um, in today's episode, we are going to be doing um, two main things. We are going to be making a uh, new house, which is going to be for resources. Um, so let's close all this. We don't need any of it. Um, let's create a new resource here. Um, and let me just pull out my reference. Here we go. Um, and we're just going to create a static body and add all everything we need. So we should have a collision shape. We're going to need a sprite, which we'll actually drag in in a second. Um, we're going to add a timer. We're going to add a progress bar. And then we're also going to add ah the sprite. So that's the, the sprite that we need. Let's find it. Um, let me find what it's called. It is called um, Resource, I think. Resource. Here we go. Resources. And we're just, because it's animated or it's a sprite sheet, we can just go to animation, um, say three, and then one, two, three, four, five, five for the V frame. And then for the frame, you can choose whatever you want. Um, I will do, I'm going to do the same one I did in my reference. I'm going to do 11. So it's a little mine thing. And then for the progress bar, let's drag that up a little bit and let's take show percentage off. And actually, let's put, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to erase that. I'm going to go to instantiate child scene. I'm going to add our tree. I'm going to make it local. I'm going to drag in the progress bar. And that's it. I'm going to delete the tree. So now I have the same progress bar. Uh, it looks relatively nice. And I'm going to expand it just a bit so it's a little bigger. And I'm going to save this guy. So this is going to be our coin house. And I'm going to save this in our houses. Save, close all this, we don't need it. Awesome, uh, let's rename this to coin house. Let's add a script for it. Let's go to our collision and add that so we don't have an error. And let's just do this. And then for our coin house, just so we keep everything consistent, we'll go to ordering and turn on Y sort. Awesome, um, and I think that is it for the setup. Um, the timer, we're actually going to change the timer to whoops, 0 0.1 seconds. And then we're going to connect the timeout. And I think that should actually be it. OK, awesome. Um, let's set up everything we need in our script. We're going to need a few variables. Um, we're going to have two on ready variables. So the first one is going to be, or both of these are just going to be our bar and our timer. So uh, let's have bar equals progress bar. And then variable timer equals timer. There we go. We're going to need a few more variables, um, one of which will be um, the total time, which I'll have as 50. This is actually five seconds, which I'll, I'll explain in a second. But uh, we'll have 50 in the current time. Um, this is, I'm not going to explain too much, because this is the same concept as, um, oh, sorry, we actually need both those functions. So let's leave them. Uh, this is the same concept as the tree. So the tree function, uh, or the tree in general. If you remember this, it's it's pretty much the same. Um, but we're going to do it anyways. We're going to do it together. Uh, I'm not going to explain too much, but I'll explain it as we go along. So um, let's see. Um, the first thing we want to do is in our timer uh, timeout is we're going to say current time minus equals 1. And then we're going to say ver queen equals get three dot create tween. In fact, actually what we can do is we're here and we can just copy this actually. Uh, let's go to our coin house, copy this, and it's everything the same. I'm gonna keep this as 0 0.1. The trans will leave the same, and that is it. Okay, um, let's also create a new function called called coin coins collected. There we go. Um, and then we'll just do game.coin plus equals 10. And as you might already know, in our game, we don't have any coin variables, so we're going to have to make that. And then we'll set it to zero. Let's capitalize it, because why not? And we'll say coin over here. Awesome. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll ignore that for now, actually. Um, and yeah, that's it for now, actually. OK. Um, and then in our process function, what we want to do is say if current time is greater than 10, 
no, sorry, smaller than or equal to zero, then we'll just call coin as collected. And then in our ready function, uh, we want to make sure we set our bar properly. So we're going to say bar max value is equal to total time, right? Yeah. And then we're also going to say current time equals total time. So that way we only have to change the current time or total time uh, in one spot. And then we're going to say timer starts. We can put timer out on auto start, but just in case like something goes wrong and it doesn't auto start, uh, we'll just call start here. And that is it. Um, so let's go into our world and let's add our coin house. Let's put this in our houses. We have a coin house. Uh, let's actually go here and transform it, make it a few times bigger than it should be. Um, and actually, let's actually put this in the objects because the houses are different. Okay, but now it should work properly. So it goes down relatively smoothly. And every time it does not reset. So how do we reset it? Um, I want you to think, how can we reset the timer and the progress bar to go back to full? Well, there's a few different ways we can do this, but um, think about like what we have already. And we can actually just call the ready function. Um, instead of like reloading this entire thing or destroying it and then creating a new one, whatever, uh, we could just call the ready function. And this just allows us to reset the entire thing, right? So now, let's zoom in a little bit it'll reset every time, right? Because we call ready. Okay, um, let me actually show you guys what I have. So it's it's very similar. So we have our resource thing. However, there's a little difference. There's a plus, <laughs> plus five, 10 G there. Um, I'll, I'll kind of fix that later, but we want that little animation of the text, right? So how can we do that? Well, it's actually very simple. Um, I did something similar to this in one of my RPGs um, and we're gonna do this here as well. So this is actually very simple. We're going to have a label node. We're going to save this as uh, POP, as in pop. And we'll put this in our global function. And we're going to rename this to POP, script, POP, save it. Awesome. Um, and then uh, let me just get my reference out. We're going to have three variables. We're going to delete all this. And a variable travel. You know what, actually, because I've already done this, I'm just going to copy paste it and explain it as we go along instead. Because if you want the full explanation, um, you can refer to my RPG series. It's um, I'm pretty sure it's in the Zelda one. Yeah, it's in the Zelda one uh, in the Zelda RPG series. There's an episode where I explain most of it. Um, I'll still explain it a little bit because um, this is Godot 4 and a bit has changed. So um, let's, yeah, let's do that. Um, so show value, um, we're going to have a function called show value with the um, two things called value and crit. Crit is a true or false thing. Uh, value is the actual number. Um, and then because we no longer have a tween, we, can, we have to create a tween here. So we can just say uh, create tween. We can do get tree, create tween, or just create tween. It doesn't matter. Um, and then we're also going to have our text. And uh, text is going to be equal to this. So we're going to have plus uh, the string value of our value. Um, and then plus G is in gold, right? Uh, and then for our pivot offset, we'll just do size divided by four. Okay. Um, for movement, okay, so this is what I used to have. So I'm going to still use the same function. This function originally was used for an on hit um, in the RPG series. So when you hit something, uh, we want something to pop out. However, when we wanted it to pop out, we don't want it to pop out always the same direction. So we had this movement function uh, where we would trap, we would set the travel dot rotated at a random float. Um, of spread, negative spread, and positive spread divided by two. Um, but in this case, we'll set it to random i. This is actually not going to create a randomized thing at all. This is actually going to just have it in one direction straight up. Um, but I keep it here just in case, because if I ever want to actually randomize it, you can just say random f, uh, meaning random float, and that'll actually make it random. And we can test that in a second. So let's, let's keep going. So now we're going to animate the position of the label. So to, to animate the position of the label, we're going to use tween property uh, instead of tween position, uh, tween value, sorry. So tween property is the same thing as um, what they used to have. I forget what it was, but tween property property is the same. Um, you just have slightly different things. So we have the self, the actual object. We're going to tween our self. We're going to tween the position. And this is the original position. So if I wanted 
yeah, so I'll show you in a second. But this is the original position, and then this is the final position, essentially. Right, so we're going to go from here to here. Right, so, so position plus movement, and we're going to take duration, so which is one second. If you want to change duration, you can have that here. Like, have another thing, duration, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to have uh, it fixed at one second. OK, um, now to animate the fade out, which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, are using the same concept. We're just going to treat the modulate instead, right? So we want to go to modulate, which is one one technically. So if we go to um, theme override, we can go to. Am I wrong? No, visibility. Sorry. Go to modulate. See a a is at one, right? So technically, or it's at like two fifty or one. Uh, but if I slowly start to, uh, I got some text in. Let's put one two three. Let's put this up here. Let's uh, try to center it. Let's actually do this. Center, center. Um, OK, there we go. Um, and if I go to modulate and I slowly start to bring it down, it disappears, right? So usually it's, it's completely solid, opaque, uh, but we're going to slowly get it to disappear. Um, and let's, no, not auto wrap, just off, center, center. Okay. Um, so that's the modulate, the fade out. Um, if crit is true, I'll put this in anyways, um, just in case you guys want it. Um, but this is, yeah, again, this is for on hit usually. So I would have a crit thing. But in this case, we're not going to have a crit. It's just always going to be one value. Um, but it's there anyways. And because the tweens have changed, we used to yield and then Q free. But this is, um, there's actually, this is something I'll explain. Um, Godot 4 is pretty useful. It has a tween callback now. So we can say tween dot tween callback. We're going to say self dot q free. Um, I think I can actually just do this. I'm not sure. I'm just going to say self dot q free anyways. Um, you'd think it would, it, it would be like this, but it's a callback. So we're just going to call the function like that. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we're going to play the tweens and we're going to call them back. So or on callback, we're going to free this entire object. So after the fade out, essentially, we're gonna call we're gonna uh, Q free this entire object because we no longer need it, right? Okay, so now in our back in our call coin house, we're going to create another uh, variable called OP. We're gonna preload it. Uh, what is this? Let me let me actually just copy it. Okay, there we go. Uh, and then in our coins collected, we want to show that. So how do we do that? Well, we have to create the object. So we're going to say variable POP equals um, POP. Uh, let me capitalize. Oh, it is capitalized. OK, awesome. Instantiate. And then we'll say um, POP, no, add child POP. Um, and we can just add it to this guy, to this coin house for now. It's OK. And then we can say, after we've added it, we say POP dot show value. We're going to call the function that we created, right? We're going to pass through this string 10. And then we're going to say false, because crit is false, right? And then we can play. And now every time it pops up or finishes, it should say 10 plus 10 gold. Um, this is a bit awkward in the sense of, uh, like, if I zoom in, it might, it's a bit different. Um, you can kind of edit it and play around with it however you want, but for now, this is fine. I like it like this. Um, yeah, I'm not going to care too much about how it looks. Um, you can edit it for your own game if you want. Um, but yeah, this is how we create a resource system and it gives us a little effect. Um, if you want to do like a sprite instead of G, you can uh, do that as well um, by adding it here in this script. Yeah, I'll let you figure that out. But yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. That's uh, that, I, I keep stuttering, but that's it for today's video. Um, nothing too complicated. It's, it's stuff that we've already done before. Hopefully you could already do something like this. Um, I was actually contemplating whether or not I should even do this mainly because we've already created a house and I've already created the concept of the tree, which is very similar. So, but it's, it's a slightly different thing. So, um, and also tweening is a bit complicated in the sense of it's a bit, different than it was in Godot 3. Uh, so I kind of wanted to show it twice. So uh, in this series, we've showed, shown quite a bit of tweening, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, 
spawning resources. We have we have two different resources. We have a spawning thing. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do next, actually. Um, we might. Uh, I'll look for attacking. I'm, we might start doing um, some attacking. So right now our units don't do anything other than like uh, farming on the thing. Um, I might work on getting them to attack a AI, for example, or a little bot thing, um, which will be cool. So I might do that. Uh, I'm not too sure what else we'll do. Oh, mini map. I might actually do a mini map for next episode instead. Um, so yeah. I might do that instead, actually. But yeah, okay. Next, yeah, I'm gonna do that instead. Next video, we'll do mini map, which will be fun because I've been getting a lot of that from mini map, um, and it's it's pretty easy actually. So I'll do that. I'll do a short video on mini map, and then we'll also do attacking and stuff like that. So that'll be fun. Uh, yeah. If you guys enjoy this video, like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.